In today's video, we will be answering all of the questions about India's booming economy and, paradoxically, the falling quality of life. For all we know, the Indian economy has indeed experienced lasting growth, or at least that is what the papers and media headlines are emphasizing, with exports reaching all-time high and publicly traded companies doubling in profits. And with the country being one of the fastest growing in the past decade, the international media makes a point of duty to talk about all of its successes, from its average 5.5% GDP growth in the past decade to the country slowly becoming the next economic super power. However, while all of these sound so perfect, you really can't help but feel that certain things don't feel right. While the headlines emphasize a booming economy, the citizens of the country don't seem to be very happy with their quality of life and even worse, the condition of their personal economy, as every day the number of people struggling continues to increase. That simply shows that even while the economy of the country may be getting a lot better, life for its citizens is only getting worse. And so that begs the question, how is all of this possible? If the economy of the country seems to be growing speedily, why is there a high rate of unemployment? And why are the benefits of this growth in the economy not being extended to the general public? What really is the issue with India's economic boom? To answer the question of what just may be the reason behind rising GDP and the plummeting quality of life, we would need to look in the direction of India's unequal development that is incited by the glutinous spending done by the upper class in the country, with its benefits rarely getting passed down beyond urban middle class. In 1991, India embarked on free market liberalization and investment in infrastructure, with the aim there to increase the standard of living and quality of life in India. This has failed. The infrastructure has fallen apart. Uh, very few families have uh, electricity. I think 80 million homes are without electricity in India. Like a third of the households don't have access to proper running water. Literacy rates are very low in the rural areas and particularly with women. And uh, the economy has simply seen a population expand to now one and a half billion. And uh, the infrastructure can't keep pace with this. At the same time, the political parties, uh, BJP in particular, are stoking up religious unrest between themselves and the Muslims and, uh, to a less extent, Christianity. So there are a lot of problems in India right now, which uh, frankly has promised so much and failed to deliver. Poverty is, is not uh, uh, not in control whatsoever and won't be why the population continues to, to grow at the tr prolific rate that it has in the past. So I, I think the, uh, the India faces problems of being the poor man of Asia for, for, for some time to come. And unless it addresses how the population is controlled, you'll have a huge swathe of that population without the, uh, the skills, the literacy, the education, and even the infrastructure to uh, live anything other than a very uh, impoverished life for the foreseeable future. Even worse, the recent epidemic has increased the inequality in the system, thereby leading millions of Indians into poverty. While, on the other hand, the number of Indian billionaires has only increased in their numbers. And as a result of this high inequality, the progress and development of the country had been endangered. Another reason why India has remained on the top 10 unhappiest countries in the world is the major unemployment. For what seemed like the longest time, the unemployment rate in India stayed at around 6%. Now, while that may just have been a bit higher than the condition of the UK or even the United States, it is still quite the same as in Canada and even lower than in most European countries. And so when you try to compare the numbers, it certainly seems not as bad as you might think. But just like the comparison between the economy of the country and the quality of life, when you take a deeper look, you start to see a more disturbing picture. One that shows that almost 90% of the jobs in the country are in the informal sector. These jobs range from farming to construction work, cleaners, shopkeepers, and even taxi drivers. Basically, these are informal jobs that are interim with very low income after all the hard labor. Even worse, there is simply no sign of growth or stability for people working unofficially. No hope just an everyday grind. But these are the people you may say do not have the education to go after the big jobs, right? 
Well, the unemployment rate is a lot higher among the younger population coming out with college degrees, with about 20 to 40% of them being unemployed, a number that is even higher than amongst those uneducated, which is truly shocking, don't you think? And most of these college graduates come out with outstanding degrees in STEM subjects that should be in demand, and yet the country still remains packed with insane numbers of unemployed engineers. And you might ask yourself, how could it be so? Simply put, the demand for engineers in the country caused several universities to hand out degrees to largely unqualified people. And this was not an issue with just engineering alone. It spans across almost every college degree, making those papers lose the worth once upheld. And aside from that, there simply hasn't been any job creation in the country leading India to experience what is referred to as jobless growth. So while the economy has been growing based on the fact that its businesses have been more efficient and more productive, it hasn't experienced any form of expansion, still remaining with zero availability of new jobs. However, due to the increase of India's population, the labor force in the country has continued to expand dramatically, in need of jobs, yet with little or even none of opportunities to get them. This, therefore, leads to terrible situations as insane numbers of people apply for the few jobs that pop up. At the beginning of the year, the Indian Railways had about 35,000 job openings. And while that sounds like just too much, the company received over 12 million applications for these openings, and those were merely clerk positions. And even more painful is the fact that many of those who went after these jobs were PhD holders, at least on paper, just so they would be able to put a meal on their table and meet their daily needs in an economy that seems to be booming so rapidly. India's economic boom, but uh, falling quality of life can be understood as that the GDP, gross domestic product, does not automatically um, enhances, improves the gross domestic Happiness and the gross domestic happiness can be achieved by using the GDP to invest in the well-being uh, of, of people. But I have been to India and many people are very poor and have to make ends meet every day because the money doesn't flow back to the population. The reality is harsh. If this growth can be seen in the lives of general public, but rather just a set of people in a particular sector, can we really state that this is growth? And this is not the case of India alone. Number of countries should take a closer look at the situation in the labor market before it's too late. Do let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on all that is happening in India. Thank you so much for watching another episode of On Finance. My name's Ray. Make sure you check out all of our social media to stay up to date, and I'll see you on the next episode.